So far, we've been able to use calculus to find the location of the center of mass for objects that have a simple shape and a mass that's uniformly distributed. Let's now have a look at what happens if we have a compound body, which is a body where there's some inclusion or a cavity and the mass is no longer uniformly distributed. Take the example of the disk here that has a radius big R, and you can think of it basically as a hockey puck if you want, where a hole has been drilled out, and then you've placed this insert that has a different mass density, rho 2, into that hole. So now you have what's called a compound body, and the insert having a different mass density, we can't claim anymore that the mass is uniformly distributed throughout the disk. And if we want to find the center of mass of this compound body, we could try to use calculus, but it's going to be very hard to parameterize our integral and very likely lead to calculus that's going to be unpleasant. And there is a better way. So first things first, we do lose some symmetry because of the inclusion, but we don't lose all symmetry because the x-axis is an axis of symmetry for this distribution. So we expect that the center of mass is going to be somewhere on this x-axis. So that's something. Second, if we look at each object separately, we essentially have two disks. Now the bigger one has a hole in it, and so that's kind of weird, but if we can treat this as the superposition of two disks, we just have to be a little careful, we can bring this problem back to a simple problem. Because if you have a disk with a uniformly distributed mass, you know that the center of mass is at the center. So let's see what I mean by superposition and how we're going to use it to find the center of mass of this arrangement. So superposition is the fact that if you take two separate objects and you sort of layer them on top of each other, you get the original mass distribution back. So here you could do it in the following way. Let me do this. I'll take a big disk without the hole, right? So it's a disk, the whole thing, with mass density rho 1 and radius big R. So that's my big disk. And then I don't want to drill a hole in it because that's going to ruin my symmetry. So I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to take a smaller disk. And I'm going to say that if I add these two, and I'm careful in how I add them, they're going to be equivalent to the original mass distribution. So this is radius r over 2. Now, doing superposition or using superposition means that you're going to layer this on top of this. Okay, But remember that we said we don't want to drill a hole in the big disk because that's going to ruin our symmetry. So instead, we're going to be clever with the mass densities. We're not going to say that this smaller disk has a mass density rho 2, because if we do that and we layer it on top of the big disk, then in the overlap region, we have rho 1 plus rho 2 mass density, so that's not good. That doesn't match up with the original mass density being just rho 2. So instead, we're going to do this. We're going to assign a mass density rho 2 minus rho 1 to this disk. And the logic here, again, is that if you superpose the two now, you can say that rho 2 minus rho 1 plus rho 1 from the larger disk gives you, in the overlap region, a mass density rho 2, and that matches what we had originally. So, something to keep in mind, a word of caution regarding the mass densities, but as long as you're careful there, you can use what's called superposition, essentially layering, if that makes sense, and recreate the original distribution from two shapes that have all their symmetry, a mass that's uniformly distributed, and therefore a center of mass that is at the center. So we already know, without doing any math, that the center of mass of this disk here is going to be at its center, and the center of mass of this disk here is going to be at its center. Now, how do we go from there to the center of mass of my compound body? Well, let's find the mass of this thing. This is a mass m1, and it's going to be mass density rho 1 times the volume of a disk. Well, that's area of base pi big R squared times height big H. Here, 
the mass m2 is going to be equal to mass density, now that's rho 2 minus rho 1, times the volume of the disk. Now, just to be um, consistent with the notes, I'm going to call this little r. At the very end, I'll substitute little r equals big R over 2. But essentially what we have here is pi r squared times the same thickness h. And now my problem becomes the following problem. It becomes the problem where I have a center of mass 1 here associated with the mass m1 and a center of mass 2 here associated with the mass m2. And if I look at the distance between these two centers of mass in the original distribution, they're separated by a distance little r, which is equal to big R over 2. So here, we essentially have, to call it x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to r, assuming we pick the origin here at the center of the larger disk. Okay, well now we know how to find the center of mass of this arrangement. That's pretty simple. There's just two masses, m1 and m2, with positions x1 and x2. So x center of mass is going to be equal to m1x1 plus m2x2 divided by m1 plus m2. Now x1 is 0, so this term vanishes already. And then m2 we know is rho 2 minus rho 1 pi r squared big H divided by m1 is rho 1 pi big R squared H plus rho 2 minus rho 1 pi little r squared H. All right, now we can clean up a few terms here. Now the thickness doesn't end up mattering in the calculation, and pi doesn't end up mattering either. And we'll just keep in mind that little r is big R over 2. So that ultimately is going to cancel big R squared from this fraction, but let's just go through the steps. This is rho 2 minus rho 1. Little r squared is going to be big R squared divided by, um, well, 2 squared, which is 4. And I suppose I should be careful. I actually have an extra term here. I have an extra r. So, and that came from x2 being r. So that's my fault. I forgot that. Um, so make sure that you don't forget this term. That makes it actually r cubed overall. So let me fix that. This is going to be r cubed. 2 cubed is 8. And then we have times rho 1 r squared plus rho 2 minus rho 1 big R squared over 4, because little r is big R over 2, and ultimately that cleans up to R2 minus R1, and if I distribute the 8 in the denominator, I get 8 rho 1 plus 2 rho 2 minus rho 1. You could do one better here, say that it's rho 2 minus rho 1 divided by 6 rho 1 plus 2 rho 2, and that would be x center of mass. So certainly there are a few um, steps in simplifying this fraction, but ultimately the calculation that you're doing is a very straightforward calculation. It's m1x1 plus m2x2 divided by m1 plus m2, and that's a lot easier than pulling out, you know, the big guns of calculus and trying to ram through this distribution, which has, you know, questionable symmetry and uh, a non-uniformly distributed mass. So the principle of superposition is a very clever principle to use when you have to find the um, center of mass of a compound body. And in this case, we have an insert. Rho 2 could be greater or smaller than rho 1. The answer uh, still holds. So you might get a negative x. That would just mean that you're to the left of the origin um, if maybe rho 2 is less than rho 1. But uh, nonetheless, the principle is that 
you restore the symmetry by considering two disks. You're just careful to assign the right um, mass density to one of the two so that when you layer them on top of each other, you get the same mass density that you started out with here, row two, for the insert. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogverse Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogverse Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogverseacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.